Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Administrator Milgram, would you agree that the vast majority of the heroin, the methamphetamine, and fentanyl we see in American communities comes from Mexico? Senator, I would say that the vast majority of fentanyl and meth is coming from the, the two cartels, Jalisco and Sinaloa, from Mexico. They also transport heroin and, and cocaine in, um, but I would, I would not say the vast majority of heroin and cocaine. Okay. I would say the vast majority of fentanyl and meth. Would you also agree that the brave men and women working along the southern border and at our port, ports of entry, our Border Patrol and CBP officers, serve a critical role in interdicting drugs before they hit our streets? Senator, as I, as I, um, as I say often, the, the way at DEA, we're, we are the, single, the only single mission federal law enforcement agency committed to narcotics. And, and to stopping the global supply chain. We play offense, and so we're, tra we're tracking these cartels worldwide so, and across So is that a yes, we've got limited time? DHS's responsibility is, is to, to maintain the southern border and the ports of entry. Our investigations do tell us that the vast majority of fentanyl is coming in the ports of entry, two particularly in California and two in Arizona. So is that a yes, that you would agree that CBP officers, both on the southern border and the ports of entry, play a critical role in interdicting drugs? Yes, Senator. I believe it's, it's a DHS responsibility, and it's a critical one. So if, if we decided to cut the number of Border Patrol agents dramatically, let's say in half, would you agree that would hurt our efforts to stop illegal drugs? Senator, I would, I would defer some of this to the Department of Homeland Security and Secretary Mayorkas. You're not um, willing to answer that question? But here's, here's what I would say about this. We believe that DHS plays vital defense. Okay, okay, those are talking points. Would cutting the number of CBP agents in half hurt our ability to stop drugs, yes or no? Senator, I believe it would. Okay. That's effectively what's happened under the Biden administration. Because right now today, more than half of the, of the CBP agents are engaged in housekeeping and chauffeurs and babysitting of the 5.5 million illegal aliens who have crossed the border. They're not on the border. They're not at the ports of entry. They are instead processing the highest rate of illegal immigration in history. Now, Democrat members of Congress have the remarkable claim that the open borders under Joe Biden has no impact on the record fentanyl and drugs that are flooding across our borders. Between October 2021 and September 2022, one CBP source estimated there were 364,000 gotaways, people that ran away at the southern border. Another Border Patrol officials put the number of gotaways at 1.2 million. Gotaways can vary from terrorists on the terror watch list. In fiscal year 20, 2022, 98 people on the terror watch list were encountered at the southern border that we know of or they can be drug dealers carrying drugs. Is that correct? Senator, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer questions on the border and the ports of entry to the Department of Homeland Security. So the DEA has no view on whether drug dealers crossing the border carry drugs? Senator, as I said from our investigations, what we see is that the majority of fentanyl I didn't ask the majority. The I, I, I said drug dealers and gotaways are carrying drugs, many of them. Senator, what we see is mostly interdict what we, what we see is mostly tractor trailers and personal vehicles. All right, all right so you're sticking fentanyl. to the talking points closely, and congratulations, it's the Democrat talking points that the open borders don't matter, but 328,000 or 1.2 uh, million gotaways don't matter. We had 100,000 people die last year of drug overdoses. My sister died of a drug overdose just over a decade ago. This is a crisis, but it is a man-made crisis. This administration made a conscious political decision to open the borders. And one of the results is they have turned Mexican drug cartels into multi-billionaires in 2018 the amount of money cartels made from human trafficking, according to the New York Times, was $500 million. Now, just from human trafficking, the cartels are making $13 billion a year. Again, according to the New York Times, that's a 2,600% increase. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Administrator Milgram, the single best thing that happened to Mexican drug cartels 
in history was Joe Biden becoming president, opening the border, and making tens of billions of dollars for these vicious criminals. In your judgment, is, a, is it a good thing that these cartels now have tens of billions of dollars from human trafficking and drug trafficking? Senator Cruz, I really appreciate the opportunity to answer your question. And as I have said clearly and will continue to say, there are two cartels in Mexico, the Sinaloa and Jalisco cartel, that are responsible for the devastation that we are seeing on the streets of our country. It is our top operational Would priority to defeat those two cartels and to stop the fentanyl and methamphetamine that Would is flooding into Would you answer the question I asked? Is it a good thing for them to have tens of billions of dollars now that they didn't have? Senator, we are doing everything we can. Okay, you're refusing to answer the question. It, it shouldn't be a hard question. Every to amount to of money, if I, if I please, if, if I could please. finish. Um, I, I very much understand your point. We believe that the cartels are making billions of dollars on illicit is good or fentanyl. Bad? It is a terrible thing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Senator Merkley. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Do you feel the same about it being theater when um, Trump sent troops to the border in 2018? I feel that Donald Trump did the best job in my political lifetime. When Donald Trump did something, it worked. Everything he did, as Ted suggested, worked. The, the, um, the triangle agreement with the three Northern Triangle countries where they would process asylum claims took the problem off the table. You had the lowest illegal crossings in December of 2020, as Senator Cruz said, in 45 years. So I would suggest that if you want to compare the Trump performance on the border to Biden, it's an easy comparison to make. What am I urging the Biden administration to do? Because Trump did it doesn't mean you can't do it. Your country is being destroyed by illegal immigration. Your own democratic cities are being overwhelmed. As Ted and John have talked about, the human misery is beyond one's imagination. You can literally repeat what Trump did to gain control over the situation if you chose to. Now, why can't they do that? Because the radical left owns this administration. The parole policies are being pushed by people who want everybody in the world to come here. The change in border policy was driven by a group of people on the left of the Democratic Party that believes we should have open borders. And if you don't get that by now, you have missed a lot. Let me add something on that. Look, sending troops to the border can have an enormous positive effect. There's no doubt boots on the ground matter, whether it is military troops, whether it is National Guard, whether it is Texas DPS officers, whether it's Border Patrol agents. Boots on the ground are an important part of how you secure the border. However, under Joe Biden, the 1,500 troops he's sending will accomplish nothing to secure the border, and they're not designed to, and here's why. The troops on the border are beneficial if you have a policy that when you apprehend someone, you deport them. Then the troops on the border are helpful for apprehending people coming across. As long as the Biden administration keeps in place catch and release, he could send 1,500 troops, he could send 10,000 troops, he could send 100,000 troops. It would do nothing to secure the border. Why? Because every illegal immigrant they encounter, they would hand over to the Biden administration, and the Biden administration would let them go, actually more than let them go, would put them on a plane or put them on a bus and take them to whatever city in America they want to go to. Joe Biden is the last mile of the human trafficking network. And to understand just how horrific it is, I'd encourage you to go back to Alejandro Mayorkas' testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee, which all three of us vigorously questioned him at the time. And there was one moment in that questioning when I put up a poster board, and it had a series of pictures of colored wristbands. And I asked him, I said, Mr. Secretary, what are these colored wristbands? And his answer, he said, I, I, I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I got to admit, that answer actually surprised me. Very little he said in that hearing surprised me. That answer astonished me. And my response to him, I said, Mr. Secretary, you have just told the American people that you are utterly incompetent at your job and you do not even care about doing it. Why? Because just about every illegal immigrant who crosses the border 
has one of those colored wristbands around their wrist. If you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande, as I have, as Lindsay has, as John has, you'll see hundreds, you'll see thousands of colored wristbands in the grass. For him to say he didn't know what they are tells me he's never stood on the banks of the Rio Grande. He's never even bothered to ask the Border Patrol agents, hey, what's going on here? The colors on the wristband correspond to how many thousands of dollars the illegal immigrants owe the cartels. Virtually all of them come in in massive debt to the cartels. And the color coding, look, for the cartels, these are not human beings. These are cargo. That's how they treat them. And you have teenage boys who come in. They owe three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to the cartels. The Biden administration sends them to your city, wherever your city is. They send them there. And those teenage boys are working for the drug cartels. And they have to work for the drug cartels because they'll murder their families back home if they don't. So every city in America is getting an influx of criminals working for the drug cartels, courtesy of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I'll tell you, as bad as it is for the boys, the girls have it a lot worse. There are thousands upon thousands of girls in sex slavery right now in forced prostitution. I look at those wristbands as modern-day leg irons. And for the Secretary of Homeland Security to say, I don't even know what they are, tells you that he has not spent one day going into the office saying, I'm going to do my job today. Tell me what's happening at the border and how we stop it. He's not trying to stop it. The administration, rather, is trying to accelerate it and create even more illegal immigration. We are witnessing an absolute travesty unfolding on our southern border. On Monday, we apprehended over 10,000 people on the border, the highest level in history. On Tuesday, we apprehended over 10,000 people on the border, again, the highest level in history. There are right now, where we're standing, more than 22,000 people camped just south of the border, getting ready to come across. Just in this location, in less than a month, we've had over 35,000 Venezuelans cross illegally just right here, not counting the whole rest of the border. Every day, just right here, they're encountering, encountering 90 to 100 Chinese nationals. Now, for anyone that doesn't have their globe nearby, China is not immediately to the south of the United States. But 90 to 100 a day are crossing illegally on this border, being smuggled in by Mexican drug cartels. And, and I have to say I am angry because this is deliberate. This is a decision that was made by President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and congressional Democrats to open up the border to what is nothing less than an invasion. Ask yourself, why is President Biden not here? Why is Kamala Harris not here? Why is Elizabeth Warren not here? Why is AOC, she still owns the white pantsuit, why is she not here with her head buried in her hands? Because they don't give a damn about the dead bodies. Six weeks ago, I asked Secretary Mayorkas how many migrants died in the past year crossing illegally. He said, I don't know. The number is 853, but he can't be bothered to worry about that. I asked him how many women have been sexually assaulted in the last year by human traffickers. He said, I don't know, because the administration can't be bothered by that. I asked how many children have been physically and sexually assaulted. Again, I don't know. We're witnessing modern day slavery. And maddeningly, what the Biden administration has decided is they want more. Title 42 is expiring today, and you know what happens tomorrow? Those numbers go up. This is an invasion, and they want the numbers to go up. Let me say to the men and women from the, from the Border Patrol who are heroes, they are extraordinary heroes, and we're down here to tell them thank you, to tell them we love you, to tell them we got your back. 
even as your political superiors are making it impossible for you to do your job. The Biden administration is really proud now that they have apps on their phone, that when someone crosses illegally, they can fill out an application in two minutes. This is the Amazon version of illegal immigration. They're going to make it fast and deliver them anywhere in the country. We've seen six and a half million people cross illegally since Joe Biden became president, and the administration wants six and a half million to be 10 million, to be 12 million, to be 15 million, to be 20 million. And the body bags that pile up, they can't be bothered to worry about. I'll tell you, the great state of Texas is on the front lines. The volume is overwhelming. It's got to stop. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to make a, a closing comment here, if I could. Um, you know, as a physician, I took an oath to heal the sick. And I certainly want us to do our part. But then as an officer in the military, as a now as a senator, I've taken an oath to defend this country and to make sure she's safe. Right now, the number one most immediate threat to our national security is this open border. And that's why I've called on the House to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. He's derelict in his duties. I'm calling on Joe Biden to come see this problem for, him, for himself. We can solve this problem. And I want to bring uh, Brandon back up here one second. Brandon, if you could tell Joe Biden there's one thing that we need to do. Do you need more troops? Do you need more, more t technology? What do you need to do for us to secure this border? The American public should not shoulder this burden. We do not need more resources. We don't need no more, more technology. We don't need more infrastructure. We have to have policy. We have to go back to the rule of law. Yes. If we have policy, we can secure the border tomorrow. He won't give it to us. That's exactly right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Yeah, let's do some questions. Okay. Okay. We'll do a couple. Yeah, we'll do a few questions. Yeah, all right. We'll do some questions. Okay, go, go, go ahead. Senator Marshall, you just witnessed that you got a taste of the humanitarian crisis here at the border. What is your state in particular, your district area? What will you do after this to help aid border towns like this one? Yeah, you know, I think that Kansas has always shouldered their, their fair share of the responsibility. Going back to the Vietnam War, we've invited thousands of people in, into Kansas. A lot of the NGOs here are connected to people back in Kansas as well. But I'm telling you, we're all overwhelmed right now. It is This is unsustainable. Senator Marshall, yeah, yeah, yeah. how many people did you see back there when, when, when you were touring? John, you want to take a uh, Well, I, I think yesterday they had something like 3,300 come across. Uh, and uh, that's before, uh, you know, the change in policy. Title 42, uh, of course, expires tonight. Uh, so we're understanding that that could easily double uh, after uh, Title 42 expires. And so that's the point we're making. You've got to change policy. They're already overwhelmed. You've already got a border crisis. So we've got to see a change in policy. And that was the question put to, to uh, Brandon Judd. The, the CBP and, and Border Patrol, they could get control of this right now, but they've got to have the tool to do it. You need the change in policies that I talked about to remain in Mexico, the third safe country. You've got to make sure that people who want to apply for asylum do it from their country or the first safe country they come to, and then we will have control of the border. That's what needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. Well, and and, and, and let, let, me, let me supplement the answer. Let me, let me supplement the answer to that. Let me supplement the answer to that, which is we saw back there a couple of hundred people that were sitting there being processed. But they've right now, the Biden administration has sped up their processing so that they can process an illegal immigrant in about two minutes. They are sending 40 or more buses a day, full buses, full of illegal immigrants. To detention facilities. So as fast as they scan them in, they pull out a phone, they scan their documents, they take whatever they say, name, age, what country you're from, and boom, they put them on a bus and send them to facilities. To give you a sense, the facilities here can hold roughly 4,600 people. Yesterday they had 7,000. So you know what they did? They had to release hundreds of people, just release them into the communities. And you know, a minute ago you asked about what other states are doing for South Texas. I appreciate that. Because, look, South Texas is bearing the brunt of this. What the Biden administration is doing to South Texas is wrong. The hospitals here are full. The prisons here are full. The schools here are full. 
the farmers and ranchers see the dead bodies every day from this travesty. And all Joe Biden wants to do is have more people come illegally. What are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank So what, what, have, what have specifically okay. the Republican members that are here today, what have you all done to help Joe Biden in this? Okay. 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 All right. So that's a ridiculous and silly question. I want to commend you for being the media and telling a Democrat policy. So let me ask you something. Come on, man. That's been going on for 20 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, let, let, let me let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. What rate of illegal immigration did we have in 2020? But you have Do you been, know anything? I asked you a question. You Do you know anything? How long have you been in office? I've been in office 11 years yeah, now. And this is okay. the calendar in multiple administrations. Except you're wrong. Okay, you don't get to argue with me. You asked your question. You, you asked your question. You don't get, you want to hold a press conference, you can do it over there. You, have multiple you, you want to hold a press conference, you can do it over there. How are you? Right, so, so, so hold on. I'm going to answer his question. The talking point of the Democrats, which this media reporter happily parrots, is, gosh, the problem can't be fixed. There's one little problem with that. It is an utter and complete lie. In 2020, the last year of the Trump presidency, we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. You ask, what have I done? I've championed the men and women of Border Patrol. I've championed securing the border. I've championed Remain in Mexico. And we turned this problem around and solved it. And we went from Joe Biden inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. And the first day in office, he made political decisions to cause this problem. And you should be ashamed of yourself because you're a reporter and you're not reporting facts, you're telling lies. Joe Biden made a political decision and they turn a blind eye. If you wanna know just how much they turn a blind eye, six weeks ago in the Judiciary Committee, I questioned Alejandro Mayorkas. I put up a poster board of colored wristbands and I asked him, Mr. Secretary, what are these colored wristbands? And he said, I don't know. I have no idea. That was the one bit of his testimony that truly shocked me because just about every illegal immigrant who crosses the border is wearing a colored wristband. They correspond to how many thousands of dollars the immigrants owe the cartels. And the fact that Mayorkas doesn't even know what they are, if you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, as I have done many times, you see hundreds or thousands of these wristbands laying in the ground. Sir, I don't know if you stood there, but I know Mayorkas hasn't because he didn't know what the wristbands were. And that means he hasn't talked to the Border Patrol agents either. It is immoral. And when those kids cross, the teenage boys who owe thousands of dollars to the cartels, the Biden administration flies them to every city in America. They fly them to Kansas. And there those teenage boys are forced to work for the Mexican drug cartels committing crimes to pay off the money they owe. And if they don't pay it off, they'll murder their families. And I'll tell you, as bad as the boys have it, the girls have it worse. There are thousands upon thousands of teenage girls trapped in sex slavery. And yet, for those of you in the media who don't report on that, you should be ashamed. This is evil. And the reason you don't see any Democrats here is they can't defend this. They're counting on the press not to cover it. It's wrong. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Cruz, the El Paso shooter called thank it an you. invasion. I'm standing here at our southern border. That's the Rio Grande River right behind me. I'm in Brownsville, Texas. Title 42 is going to expire in just a few hours. We're seeing an invasion at our southern border, and there are right now over 22,000 illegal immigrants right across the river. You can see the lights. You can see people camping out. You can see a fire right there. If you look, you can see them. They're waiting. They're waiting for Title 42 to expire. And then the invasion we're going to see is going to be massive. We already have the worst illegal immigration in the history of our country. And in just a few hours, it's getting worse. Joe Biden, this is your fault. The people who are killed crossing illegally, that's your fault. The women who are sexually abused crossing illegally, that's your fault. The children who are brutalized crossing illegally, that's your fault. The people dying of drug overdoses, over 100,000 last year, that is your fault. Come down here, President Biden. Stop hiding in the basement. Stop pretending this misery is not your fault. Stop it. This is not humane. This is not compassionate. This is cruel. I'm walking along the road alongside the Rio Grande. If you look at what you see, you see sandals, you see another sandal, you walk along, you see another shoe. I want you to look at this. 
This is a little bitty flip-flop. That's of a little girl. She can't be more than five or six years old. She might be even younger than that. Here's a kid's tennis shoe. Here's abandoned clothes. Here's the other tennis shoe from that child. As you walk along, I want you to now look at the razor wire and then look across the border. That's the Rio Grande River. You're looking at Mexico. You're looking at Matamoros. I'm in Brownsville. Listen to the music. There's a party south of the border. They're celebrating. They're celebrating because just a couple of hours from now, Title 42 will be lifted. And the 22,000 people who are south of the border will cross and come into America. We'll see tragedy. There's a t-shirt. We'll see suffering. We'll see people die. We'll see women brutalized. And we'll see children brutalized. This is horrific. This is cruel. And this is a deliberate political decision from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and every congressional Democrat. We're facing an unmitigated disaster at our southern border. Illegal immigration is the worst in our nation's history and it's indefensible. All of us have been down to the southern border. I spend a lot of time on our southern border. John Cornyn and I together brought 19 senators down to the border to see firsthand. You cannot see what is happening there and defend it. One of my recent trips to the border, a reporter asked me, said, aren't the policies of Democrats more compassionate, more humane than you mean Republicans? And I just started laughing. I said, you know who doesn't believe that anymore? Democrats. Where's Joe Biden? Where's Kamala Harris? Where's even a single Democrat senator? Where's AOC? I assume she still has her white pantsuit. She just can't be bothered to cry in front of the Biden cages. Because with Trump no longer in the White House, suddenly the suffering of those kids doesn't matter. You cannot see what is happening and defend it. And by the way, the reason Biden doesn't, doesn't go to the border, the reason Kamala Harris and other Democrats don't go to the border, because if they did, y'all would follow. The press would follow. And their only defense, they cannot defend what they're doing. Their only defense is to cover it up. Corrine Jean-Pierre stands at the White House podium and says, people are not just walking across the border. It's not happening. There's a technical legal term for what that is. That's called bullshit. It is an utter and complete lie. It is a deliberate lie. It is a known lie. And she is lying on behalf of the President of the United States in the White House. Now, why does she lie? She lies because she counts on the press not to call her out. Was there a PolitiFact, a pants on fire done on that? No. I've invited the White House press secretary, come with me to the southern border any day and pick any hour of the day. We'll go out in one hour and I guarantee you we will encounter group after group after group. You want to know how bad it is? We're now seeing Democrat mayors, Democrat governors, mayors like Eric Adams, the Democrat in New York, who says, Illegal immigration is destroying New York City. That's with 110,000 illegal immigrants in New York City. If 110,000 is destroying New York City, what in the hell do you think 7.6 million is doing to the state of Texas and the other states along our southern border? Now, these Democrats who are saying this, they can't quite muster up the strength to put the blame where it lies which is at the feet of Democrats who are doing this deliberately. Instead, Mayor Adams blames, quote, that madman down in Texas, by which he means Greg Abbott. I have to admit, I was kind of offended he wasn't referring to me. But he blames Greg Abbott for putting a few thousand illegal immigrants on buses and sending them to New York City. The person who caused this crisis, his name is Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. His home address is 16 blocks away, and by the way, if Eric Adams wants some help fixing this problem, he can pick up the phone and call someone else named Charles Schumer. He's a New York resident. I believe he lives in Manhattan. If the mayor doesn't have his number. We can give him Chuck Schumer's cell phone. 
because Chuck Schumer is responsible, in the words of the New York mayor, for destroying New York City. Look, some of y'all may have seen when Alejandro Mayorkas testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I asked him, I said, Mr. Secretary, how many migrants died last year crossing illegally? He said, I don't know, I have no idea. I said, of course you don't. The official numbers are 853, but you don't care about those dead bodies that appear in Texas every single day. I asked him how many children were brutalized by human traffickers. He said, I don't know. How many women were sexually assaulted? I don't know. How many people died of drug overdoses? As John Cornyn told you, it's more than 100,000. And you want to talk about something stunning. I put up a, a photograph with pictures of colored wristbands. I said, Mr. Secretary, what are these wristbands? And he said, I have no idea what they are. Now, look, any good lawyer will tell you, you don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. That was one answer that left me flabbergasted. Because just about every single illegal immigrant who crosses the border wears one of those wristbands. They're color coded for how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. And if you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, you see hundreds or thousands of these wristbands. They're just like this. These are the wristbands picked up from, from the banks of the Rio Grande River. And the little boys, the teenagers who come in who owe thousands of dollars to the cartels, they're sent to every city in America, and they're working for the cartels to pay off those thousands of dollars. They're committing crimes in Washington, D.C., in New York, in every city in America. And if they don't pay off the cartels, their families will be murdered. And as bad as the boys have it, the girls have it even worse. There are literally thousands upon thousands of girls trapped in sex slavery to pay off their debts to the cartels. When I look at these, these are modern day leg irons. This is human slavery. And it is caused by the Democrats not giving a damn about the people being abused. And so I want to make a plea to the press. The reason the Democrats can do this, can look the other way, is because they're confident that the corporate media will not report on it, that they'll never have to answer questions about it. They'll never be confronted with the dead bodies, with the people being brutalized by these policies. So I want to make a plea to you, if you're not writing on it, if you're not running stories on it, if you're not telling what's happening, you are complicit in modern day slavery. This is indefensible. It's evil. Senator Britt. Senator Cornyn. If uh, Senator Cruz's Panama Act passes, would that uh, in any way alleviate the immigration issue with the numbers drop in any way? Look, the only way to alleviate the numbers is to end catch and release. If you look at what Joe Biden inherited, he came into office with the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. Right now, one of the talking points of the White House is this problem can't be solved. That talking point simply is not correct. What caused this crisis was a decision that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made literally the first week in office. They halted construction of the border wall. They reinstated catch and release and they pulled out of the incredibly successful remain in Mexico policy. Those decisions caused this crisis. Last night, when we encountered the group, we asked them, how many of y'all believe you get to stay in America? Every one of them said, absolutely, we get to stay. As long as that's the case, they will keep coming. And understand, Joe Biden doesn't want to fix this problem. He doesn't want to secure the border. Kamala Harris doesn't want to secure the border. Chuck Schumer doesn't want to secure the border. Alejandro Mayorkas doesn't want to secure the border. Here's what they want to do. They want to speed up the processing of illegal immigrants. They want to make it even faster. They want more illegal immigration. They want 8 million to become 10 million, to become 15, to become 20 million. To understand the enormous hypocrisy on this issue, Look no further than the blue state governors and the blue state mayors who are declaring crises. Look at Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, who has said illegal immigration is a crisis and illegal immigration is destroying New York City. And New York City has had roughly 110,000 illegal immigrants. I don't disagree with Mayor Adams on that, but the last I checked, 
New York City is a hell of a lot bigger than McAllen, Texas. Just in the Rio Grande Valley sector, Border Patrol agents have detained over one million illegal immigrants in the last two and a half years. If 110,000 is destroying a giant metropolis like New York, what about the devastation here in South Texas? Understand this is deliberate. They're not trying to stop it. They want more of this. And, and I got to say, the absolute lack of compassion from this administration. I asked Alejandro Mayorkas, I said last year, how many migrants died crossing illegally into this country? He said, I don't know. I have no idea. The answer is 853. But the Biden administration can't be bothered to worry about the body bags that are piling up. We've introduced lots of legislative steps that can all make a difference, but none of it will work. Zero will work. As long as you have a president of the United States who defies the law, who simply says, if you come to this country, we will let you go. That's what's caused this crisis. And I'll point out, by the way, Mayor Adams blames, quote, that madman in Texas, by which I'm pretty sure he meant Greg Abbott, although I have to say I was offended he wasn't talking about me. <laughs> because Greg Abbott has sent 10 to 20,000 illegal immigrants by bus to New York City. The rest of them were sent by Joe Biden, and even the Democrat governors and mayors, they can't bring themselves to point out the person who caused this crisis is named Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr. And by the way, a fellow New Yorker, Charles Schumer, and every Democrat senator is completely complicit in it. And if Mayor Adams doesn't know Chuck Schumer's cell phone, we'd be glad to give it to him. Because Senate Democrats could force Biden to stop this, but they don't want to. And that is profoundly inhumane. Thank you. It is great to be back in the Rio Grande Valley. South Texas is an extraordinary place. And South Texas is paying the price for the disaster of the open borders under the Biden administration. For the past decade, John Cornyn and I have repeatedly brought our colleagues from the Senate down to South Texas to the Rio Grande Valley to see firsthand what's happening. Because you cannot understand what is unfolding, particularly over these last three years, without seeing it with your own eyes. On this trip, we came down with five senators all together. We started the trip by going to the Border Patrol station and joining their midnight muster. And we took the opportunity to st stand in front of the men and women of this sector in the Border Patrol and say thank you. Thank you for the heroes that risk their lives every day trying to keep this country safe. And I got to say, for the men and women of the, bo the Border Patrol to have their job frustrated and made impossible by the political leadership of this administration, by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas, is utterly disgraceful. The men and women of the Border Patrol are frustrated. They're deeply frustrated because they risk their lives apprehending people only to see, turn around and see them let go over and over and over again. After that, we went out on midnight patrol with the agents. Some months ago, Corrine Jean-Pierre stood at the White House podium and said, people are not just walking across the border. It's simply not happening. Everyone here today know that, knows that was a lie. She was lying on behalf of the President of the United States in the White House with the President's seal in front of her. My response at the time, I said, Corrine, come to the border anytime. Come out with me, and I guarantee you within an hour, we will encounter a group. Well, last night, within the hour, we encountered a group. It's about 20 people. They had voluntarily turned themselves in, as many, many do in the Rio Grande Valley. They were predominantly women and children. And we spent about 40 minutes talking to that group. There was one little girl who's 13 years old. She had no family with her. She was unaccompanied. There was another little girl who was 16 years old. She had no family with her. There was a little boy who was 15 years old, he had no family with him. 
We asked them about the violence they'd faced on the travel over. The look in those kids' faces was horrifying. For me, the most disturbing part of the conversation was a little girl in the back of the group who was 10 years old. And she had a man who said he was her father with his arm draped forcefully around her. And it was obvious to anyone who's ever seen a father and daughter that these two were not related. At one point when we asked about her mother, we saw her look to the man who was claiming to be her dad wondering what's the answer supposed to be. During the Trump administration, they were regularly DNA testing kids who were with adult men. And upwards of 30% of them were not related to the adult men. One of the first things Joe Biden did was end the DNA testing. Because apparently Democrats don't care if that 10-year-old girl is related to the adult man that the cartel handed her over to. There was also a couple that we met from Moldova, a husband and wife and a little two or three year old girl. The little girl was precious. But what these people had been through, the abuse that they had endured at the hands of human traffickers, you could see the pain on their faces. We asked the unaccompanied minors, where are you, where are you going to stay? And one after the other, they said, I'm going to stay with my tío, my uncle. Apparently, there are a lot of theos in America. And yet the 13-year-old told, told us her Theo didn't know she was coming. And I got to say, it was horrifying as we left them, knowing there's a very good chance those teenage girls are being taken off to be sex trafficked, to be trapped in forced prostitution, as is happening to thousands and thousands of teenage girls. When we were on the border, we also saw a colored wristband. Some of you may remember I asked Alejandro Mayorkas about those colored wristbands, and he told us he had no idea what they are, which was truly stunning because almost every illegal immigrant wears one, and they're color-coded for how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. You can find them littering the grass by the Rio Grande River, and yet the man allegedly in charge of securing the border hasn't bothered to talk to the Border Patrol agents, hasn't bothered to go to the border and see the children being abused because of these open borders. This is a humanitarian crisis. South Texas sees the thousands of children abused, sees the thousands of women sexually abused, sees the dead bodies. We saw pictures, picture after picture after picture. 853 people died last year crossing illegally into this country. And with the war that is unfolding in Israel, the risk of terrorism in the United States, I believe today, is greater than it has been at any point since 9-11. Border Patrol has sent written guidance to Border Patrol agents be on guard for Hamas and Hezbollah seeking to enter the country and carry out the same atrocities they're carried out in Israel. I have a simple message for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and every Democrat senator. Come to the border. Come to the Rio Grande Valley. Come out on midnight patrol and look in the eyes of the little children who are suffering from th these inhumane policies. This is horrific. This is wrong. And the people of South Texas know this is an utter disaster. For the past decade, John Cornyn and I have regularly taken our colleagues down to the southern border because you can't really understand what's happening there until you see it firsthand with your own eyes. We just got back from the border Thursday and Friday of last week. We flew out Thursday afternoon. We arrived in the Rio Grande Valley Thursday night. And the first thing five of us, five senators, did is we went to the midnight muster of the Border Patrol agents. And we went there principally to tell those agents thank you. Those men and women, they, they risk their lives every night dealing with very dangerous human traffickers, drug traffickers, 
and they are frustrated beyond belief. They're frustrated because they risk their lives catching dangerous people and they turn around and their political superiors just let them go. And the next day they go back and catch the same people all over again. So we wanted to say thank you to them. We also wanted to listen to them. We sat there and just spent some time asking, what do we need to know? One of the things they told us about is the Biden administration just issued new guidance in the past year on pursuit of illegal aliens who are fleeing. And, and as they said, really what it should be called is guidance on non-pursuit. In that the Biden administration has prohibited Border Patrol agents from chasing any traffickers who are fleeing if there's anything about the flight that could endanger human safety. What does that mean? That means, for example, if there are more people in a vehicle than there are seatbelts, the Border Patrol is not allowed to pursue. And they said regularly they'll be coming up on a car filled with illegal immigrants, and the traffickers will tell everyone, sit up so it's obvious there are four people in the back seat or five people in the back seat and only three seatbelts. Now, under the Biden administration's rules, they have to discontinue the pursuit and say, go on, keep, keep carrying your fentanyl, keep trafficking people because we're not going to pursue you. They said now routinely, as soon as they see a Border Patrol agent trying to pull them over, they run a stop sign, they run a red light, they violate a traffic law. That, of course, endangers people's safety, but they know under the new guidance, the instant they run a stop sign, the Border Patrol is ordered to say, nope, never mind, we can't pursue you. This is an administration that doesn't want to secure the border. They want this crisis. Those 8 million people, the only thing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Senate Democrats want is 8 million to become 10, to become 12, to become 20 million. After midnight muster, we went out on midnight patrol with the Border Patrol agents. This is something I've done many times. Every time you're out on midnight patrol, within minutes you encounter groups of illegal aliens. I want to remind you all, this is an experienced group of Capitol Hill reporters. You know that Corrine Jean-Pierre stood at the White House podium and said, people are not just walking across the border. It's simply not happening. Now, there's a technical legal term for what she was saying there. That's called a lie. It's not an opinion. It's not one side said or the other side said. It's a flat-out lie. As I said in response at the time, Corrine, you are welcome to come with us anytime you like. Pick any hour of the day, we'll go out for an hour, and I promise you we'll encounter a group of illegal aliens. But you know why she lies? Because she's counting on the reporters not to write a story. Today, the spokesperson for the President of the United States lied to the American people standing in the White House with the White House seal and did it at the direction of the President of the United States. The group we encountered is about 20 or 25 people. It's mostly women and children. And we spent about a half hour talking with that group, asking them questions. At first, they were apprehensive, but we asked them, we said, how many of y'all believe you're going to be able to stay? Every one of them, absolutely. Oh, we know once we get here, we can stay. You want to know why there's a crisis? Because every one of them knows once they get here, Joe Biden will let them go. This group, I wish every one of you in this room had been there to see this group. There was one little girl, she was 13 years old. She was traveling as an unaccompanied minor. She had no, no family with her at all. We asked her, where are you going? She said she's going to see her tío. Tío is Spanish for uncle. Another little boy there was 15. Another girl was 16. They were unaccompanied as well. They were also going to see their tíos. There were lots of T.O.s that they were heading to. We asked the 13-year-old, does your T.O. know you're coming? No, haven't spoken to him. I just have a number of some man I'm supposed to call. There was a reporter who was with us from Fox News who said, here, do you want to use my cell phone? Do you want to call your T.O. right now? She said, no, no. It was obvious this was not her uncle she was calling. The most disturbing, John Barrasso referenced. There was a 10-year-old girl with a grown man who was about 35 years old. He claimed to be her father. This girl was terrified. He had his arm around her, 
but it wasn't a fatherly hug. It was more holding her in place. We asked her about her mother, and she just looked terrified at the dad. And he answered, oh, no, no, she stayed back. We know, under the Trump administration, when they DNA tested grown men with children, about 30% of them were not related to the kids. That's because you get preferential treatment if you arrive as a family unit, 30%. What did Joe Biden do when he came into office? One of the very first things he did was end the DNA testing. I have to tell you, standing there that night with those Border Patrol agents, it was sick watching that little girl. That man was not her father. And there was nothing the agents could do. The cartels are literally renting children to grown men. And we were looking at children that were in all likelihood in the process of being sex trafficked. Those teenage girls faced a high likelihood of being headed into forced prostitution. What is happening is horrific. It is cruel. It is inhumane. I want to encourage every reporter here, go down and see for yourself. Go look in the eyes of a little girl. We asked the kids, how many of y'all faced violence and abuse on the trip? Every one of them, they looked down, they were horrified. Some of y'all may remember I asked Alejandro Mayorkas about the colored wristbands. I put up a poster in the Senate Judiciary Committee. He said he had no idea what they were. He didn't know. That answer shocked me. Because just about every illegal alien wears those colored wristbands. They're color-coded for how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. You can find them along the banks of the Rio Grande. I reached down and picked up several while I was there. This administration doesn't care, and those wristbands are modern-day leg irons. It is utterly inhumane and unspeakable what Joe Biden and the Democrats are allowing to happen, subjecting children to modern-day slavery. This has got to end.